All right, this is another FRQ. This is uh, 2010 Form B, Question 2. In response to nutrition concerns raised last year about food served in school cafeterias, the Smallville School District entered into a one-year contract with the Healthy Alternative Meals Company, HAM. Under this uh, contract, the company plans and prepares meals for 2,500 elementary, middle, and high school students with a focus on good nutrition. So we have elementary, middle, and high school. The school administration would like to survey the students in the district to estimate the proportion of students who are satisfied with the food under this contract. Two sampling plans for selecting the students to be surveyed are under consideration by the administration. One plan is to take a simple random sample of students in the district and then survey those students. The other plan is to take a stratified random sample of students in the district and then survey those students. Describe a simple random sampling procedure that the administrators could use to select 200 students from the 2,500 in the district. We can assign all students a number from one to 2,500, place the 25 numbers in a bin and mix thoroughly, draw 200 numbers without replacement, and then survey the 200 students whose names correspond with the number drawn. Alternatively, I could place all two, the names of all 2,500 uh, students in a hat and mix thoroughly. And I could draw um, 200, the first 200 names without replacement. And those would be the uh, students who were surveyed. And that would be a simple random sample. All right. Um, so that's fairly easy. And by the way, when it comes to simple random samples, um, unless they make you use a random number uh, table or the calculator, it's much easier just to put things in a hat and mix or a bin and mix. If a stratified random sampling procedure is used, give one example of an effective variable in which to stratify the survey. Explain your reasoning. Well, I remember in elementary school, I like school. I, I like McDonald's. I also like Jell-O and I like their pudding. When I got to high school, I really did not care for that. You know, I much prefer a steak, and I really wasn't big on school um, um, school jello or um, school pudding. Because of potential differences in food preferences of student ages, I would choose to stratify on school type or school age. My three strata would be elementary, middle, and high school. As people age, and why? As people age, their nutritional requirements and taste often change. Consequently, food satisfaction is likely to differ by school type or school age, however you want to say it. But you have to say, hey, what's your strata are, and you got to give a reason why you chose it. And we said, hey, we prefer as we get older, our tastes change. When I was young, uh, I didn't necessarily care for uh, steak when I was really little. Um, some age I did pretty quickly. Describe one statistical advantage of using a stratified random sample over a simple random sample. Well, think about this. If I had all 2,500 names in the hat and mixed and drew, it'd be possible that all of them, came, that I didn't represent the high school or I didn't represent one grade level or type. By stratifying, I'm sure of having proportional representation of all school types. So stratifying based on school type or age assures that satisfaction ratings are obtained from elementary, middle, and high school. Other strategies can miss a type of school completely, and that would be an issue if food satisfaction var varies by age. Always give a context in your explanation. Okay, thank you for that.